You know, you can learn to do many things, but is being funny a skill? Or is it a talent? Well, some would-be comedians from Connecticut are going to find out this weekend when stand-up comedy icon Lisa Lampanelli hosts a workshop called Finding Your Funny Voice. And Lisa is now joining us live to tell us more. <laughs> Hi, Lisa! <laughs> happy birth First of all, happy birthday, Scott. I'm 62, and I look way better than you do. So no problem. <laughs> I know any advice to Scott as he yeah. enters his 60s? Considering I was thinking about being a stand-up comedic, uh, I can't oh. say the word. See, he's, he's it, already it is funny. A good, it is a good way to keep you young. I'm telling you, they say laughter is the best medicine. I don't know if it's the best, but it really does help you get through some tough things in life. So that's why we're teaching this class, because I'm like, you know what? Even if I can't teach you to be funny, I can at least teach you to get some laughs, find your voice, and kind of speak from the heart, if, if only that. There was you before, and there is you now. And apparently your weight loss journey actually transitioned your comedy, is that true? Pretty much, I mean, it all kind of converges. Uh, I think as I shed some of the armor that I had built up over the years, physically and emotionally, I was able to retire from comedy, kind of find some joy just living day to day and having a decent life. And um, it kind of was interesting that I just followed my heart and now I kind of just do things that speak to me. So doing workshops like this really helped me go, oh, you know, people can learn from my experience, see if they can get some joy out of life through comedy and just have a good time. And what has that transition been like? I mean, in a way, when you're around people who you consider funny, are you able to like spot the talent within? Or is it something that you think they kind of have to grow as mm. they, you know, kind of get their reps in? Good question. Yeah, well, it, great question. Everybody does have to grow. It takes, uh, in my opinion, it takes about seven years to get comfortable on stage. Mm -hmm. And what the, a workshop like a one day or a workshop like this does is go, oh, I've always always wanted to try it. And it'll help you cross it off the bucket list if it's something that's not meant to be. Or it'll just transition you into something else. Maybe you want to be a public speaker, a keynote speaker, a storyteller. You never know. There's just so much to be said for finding your voice, being able to speak the truth, and doing something with it. It's it's really, it's magical. I, I took a comedy class the first time I went on stage. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I'll be able to do this for a living. And thank God for the world, the answer was she can. <laughs> <laughs> and she did. <laughs> you were a copy editor for Popular Mechanics and assistant at Rolling Stone. You studied journalism at Boston College in Syracuse. What, what helped you get into comedy? And were those jobs funny? No, they were decidedly unfunny, but I did meet I did meet a guy at Rolling Stone, Steve Futterman, I'll never forget it. I hope he knows I think of him often, where he I said to him, Steve, I want, might want to try stand-up. Do you think I should? He goes, oh, no, they're all conceited. It's all about them. And I'm like, oh, my God, it sounds perfect for me. <laughs> so thank you, Steve Futterman, for turning me on to the most self-consumed art form there is. Is it true that you were heavily influenced by Dean Martin's roasts and that you had never oh. seen stand-up comedy, really, up, other than that? Yes, I literally was raised, my parents loved watching those Dean Martin roasts on NBC years ago. And that's what I thought comedy was like. I thought you just make fun of people. So when I started doing comedy, I'm like, well, I guess that's what I do. And luckily at that time, it's the 90s and 2000s where you're like, that's what comedy was. So I really thankfully merged with the Comedy Central roast. And it all kind of converged into a pretty great career for 30 years until I was like, okay, let's move on to something a little more chill. Lisa, there was a gentleman in Topeka, Kansas. His name is Fred Phelps, or was. Oh. I lived in Topeka, Kansas, and was so frightened of this man. So when you came out against him, mm -hmm. I, me as a gay man, and you came out against him, I was so thankful for you and oh. your support for the LGBTQ plus community. So thank you so yes. much for doing that. It, it really made a remarkable difference. Well, I was so glad because what I did was they were going to protest one of my shows. This is a very hate, a big hate group was going to protest one of my shows because I have a largely gay fan base at the time I did. And I was like, um, I'm going to give $1,000 for every protester who shows up. <laughs> so, right? so many showed up that it ends up I have to write this big check. But I'm like, good, I stuck it to them. So there you go. <laughs>
<laughs> That's amazing. And you also raised a lot of money when you were on Celebrity Apprentice 5 as well, right? Yes, yes. Oh, my God, it was so great. I mean, the Celebrity Apprentice was insane. Uh, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Wow. I've been so tired since then. And, um, you know, this was way before any politics were involved. It was just basically Trump was just a, a host of a show at the time. And, oh, my God, it was so tiring. But I raised, I think, 150 grand for the gay men's health crisis in New York City. And, Scott, after I took my 75% cut, I really helped. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so when are you coming to Connecticut? Yeah, on Saturday, March 30th, which is this Saturday. You know, avoid your family on this Easter weekend. That's what I always say. <laughs> I talk about at the Playhouse on Park in West Hartford, Connecticut. It's an amazing facility, beautiful theater. They could do great work. And they're slumming and having me do a thing there. So come on down. It's one day. Figure out if you should do stand-up. All right, we can't, great. can't thank you enough. So much. Uh, this is uh, so much fun. And also, you are local to Connecticut, right? Born From Trumbull. Trumbull. Yes. So the homegirls yep, come right. back this weekend. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. It's a great estate. I really enjoy myself here. And Parker says hi. Hi, He's my Parker. Rescue dog. Bye, Lisa. Yeah. We love you. Thanks, Take Lisa. care. Happy birthday. Thank you. Woo. There's all the information you need. Saturday, 3.30.